Hi, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. So for this video, we are doing a little unboxing of just a couple of plants. And I mean, couple in the technical sense, there are two plants in this unboxing. They are both plants that I'm very excited about for different reasons. This order is from a plant store called Gabriella Plants. They're based in Florida and they are one of my absolute favorite online plant retailers. They have hundreds of plants like at any given moment. Like I feel like their store is probably the one that I check the most often because they update their inventory once a week on Wednesdays, which is today gonna have to look at their website later. Um, but they, they update their inventory all the time and they have lots of good stuff and their prices are always really reasonable. This box has two plants in it and they are from my plant wish lists, but they're kind of like two different categories of plant wish lists. One of them is a reality wish list, which is like a list of plants that someday I hope to check off all of these plants and add them into my collection. They're plants that I'm like always looking out for. And then the other wish list is one that I call my fantasy wish list, which is like, <laughs> If I lived somewhere else or if I had a big greenhouse or if I had the means to care for certain plants, these are the fantasy plants that I would love to own in my fantasy world, but in reality, I probably will never own them. Well, I went and did a thing. Gabriella Plants actually has one of my fantasy wish list plants available, and I am not sure if this plant and I are gonna get along very well, but I've just been curious about it for so long. This is just a plant that I've been itching to get my hands on. I wanna feel it. It's got some interesting textural elements. One of my favorite things about ordering from Gabriella Plants is their packaging. Like, they package their plants so well. I mean, I don't want to jinx it, but this box looks pretty good on the outside. I hope I didn't jinx it. <laughs> you should always wait to see it before I say these kind of things. <laughs> Yay! They always put this little sticker in here that says smile. Okay, which one should we do first? Let's do the reality wish list plant first. <laughs> Okay, so this is a plant that like I don't have super high hopes for, not because of like doubting Gabriella plants or anything like that, but I have set these very lofty expectations in my head for what I want this plant to look like when I finally get one. I've been like <laughs> wanting one of these for a really long time, but reject every one that I see because I feel like it's not good enough. Like when I go plant shopping and stuff, I have to temper my expectations. I've just been like waiting to see a really huge one. This obviously isn't really huge. Like this one is gonna come in a four inch pot so like I know it's not gonna be like suddenly like an enormous plant um, it's gonna be a small one but I'm still very excited for it nonetheless so let's open it okay yeah first of all look at this look at this packaging do you see this there are these two tubes in here each of these tubes contains a plant and the tube fits perfectly in the box Gabriella plants does this packaging thing that like <laughs> I love it it just like makes me feel very satisfied okay It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, wow, so beautiful. Ah, it's so amazing. Come here, you wanna see this? Come here, come here. Yay, okay, so. This plant is a Diffenbachia reflector. It is a Diffenbachia hybrid and it's called a Diffenbachia reflector because in the right light, the leaves are shiny, like reflectors, um, you know, like on a bike helmet. It's really, really cool. Some plants have this really bright silvery coloration in their leaves that is, I think, mainly a protective mechanism to reflect back light. And this plant um, has these little, spots in this coloration that shines like a reflector. And I've been wanting one of these for like a decade <laughs> and I've never bought one for some reason. So I'm so excited to have one of these in my collection now. 
it's beautiful. It's beautiful and bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So hooray. By the way, my dog was over here with this. This is not a pet friendly plant. These plants are pretty toxic. Can make your throat close up. It's like, don't nibble on these. Okay, this is so beautiful. I'm really, really excited to add this into my collection. I'm gonna try to take really good care of this plant. I'm gonna have to give it pretty bright light and stuff like that because um, one of the things that I've noticed about Diffenbachia working in various plant shops and with my own experience, the smaller ones tend to be a little bit more needy. They don't like to be too dry for too, too long. Um, they tend to not like be able to bounce back from like a very severe wilting. Whereas once they get more mature, when you've got them in like an eight inch pot or so and the stem is a little bit thicker, they start to be much easier to care for. I would notice that in, in plant shops, the small ones that wouldn't get bought would tend to not last very well very long unless you put them in very bright light. Whereas once they get bigger, they seem a little bit better at sustaining themselves. And I think this is true of a lot of different kinds of plants, um, which is why sometimes there's this like misconception that like if you're a beginner trying to buy plants, it's a better idea to buy a tiny one. But sometimes the tiny ones are harder to care for, just like any living thing. A more juvenile version of it is usually got more needs and a smaller range of environmental stressors that it can tolerate before there are like serious consequences. Whereas when things get older, they can handle a little bit more stress because they've got some type of physical energy reserve to rely on, like a bigger stem or a bigger root system and stuff like that. So with the small Diffenbachias, I've noticed they can be a little bit finicky. So I'm gonna treat this one really nicely because it's very special to me. So, okay. Next. Okay, let's open the next one. This one is the star of the show. I have no idea what this plant is gonna look like. I saw one of these in the San Francisco Conservatory of Flowers. The stems have this, um, have this texture. Okay, I'm gonna open it. Let's look at it. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself, I'm excited. It's beautiful. Look, it's already beautiful. I don't know if you can see the leaf. Can you see it? Okay, I'm nervous. Wow. Okay, I have to do the thing I've been dying to do before I even talk to you about it. <laughs> oh, this plant has really spiky stems, but not like dangerously spiky, just like, just a little bit spiky. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow, okay. So this is called a Certosperma johnstonii, and it is a member of the aeroid family. So this particular species of Certosperma, Certosperma johnstonii, grows enormously huge. The leaves get like five feet long. They are enormous. I'm gonna have to show you some pictures um, and pop them up from botanic gardens and from where they grow in the wild, um, because this is a really, really, enormous plant and it's been on my radar for a while because it is a really big plant and this is a plant that was sort of a rarity in cultivation for houseplant collectors and for aeroiders before the current houseplant boom. This was a plant that was highly prized in the past and I think it never really made its way into today's version of plant collecting because I think it's a little bit hard to care for. So the Certosperma johnstonii is native to the Solomon Islands which is in like Oceania. It's like a little bit northeast of Australia and it wants to live in a very very hot, humid, wet environment. It wants to grow even partially submerged underwater. Um, so this is a plant that in my mind, I group together almost like with water lilies. Like if you're a person who likes to grow aquatic gardens, this is the plant for you. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any aquatic gardens. I don't know if this plant and I are gonna get along in the long run, but 
Gabriella Plants is selling these for only $20 right now. And so I actually really never thought I would own one, um, but Gabriella Plants actually tissue cultured these and they're pretty hard to find. These sort of spermas grow rhizomatically, which means that they grow by a rhizome, which is like a big starchy root, um, sort of similar to like a taro plant, like the colocasia or alocasia. It's got these beautiful arrow-shaped sagittate leaves, which is the botanical technical term for this shape. Um, sagittate means arrow shape, like in Sagittarius for the archer shoots an arrow. So yeah, these leaves are beautiful and they have these amazing red pinkish veins on them that as the plant matures go away, but they are more present when the plant is smaller. So my favorite thing about the plant is this, the stem texture. I mean, it's just really, really cool. Like it makes it very different than other plants that have a similar growth form. <laughs> Little spikes all over the stem which for some reason I think is just so cute and interesting. Um, my guess is these spikes serve the purpose of preventing fish from nibbling on these stems when they grow underwater because the other plant that I think of that has similar stems to this are water lilies. Water lilies have these little spikes all over the stems because it helps protect them from fish that want to eat them. So. I think that's why this is spiky, I would imagine, although it could be similar protection from land roaming animals that might snack on this plant. So certosperma um, means round seed. My husband's like, did you say this plant's name was sperm? <laughs> yes, and in biology, sperma or sperm, that root means seed. Um, and so certosperma means round seed, sir, sir like circular. Um, and so certosperma means this plant produces seeds that are rounded. And that is in opposition to other plants that belong to the same subfamily, which produce seeds that have like bumps on them. So it's not, it's not super relevant to the physical characteristics of the plant that you see before you. Um, it's more specific to the floral anatomy. And this is a plant that is not self-fertile. Um, it does not produce fruit on its own, or it's not been known to set fruit in cultivation. Okay, so I'm so excited to have this plant in my collection, this sort of sperma Johnstonii, hopefully will get huge someday if I can give it the right conditions. It's just so whimsical. It's got the red veins and then the spiky spotted stem. <laughs> it's amazing what you can get in the mail. I really never thought that I would have one of these. Um, <laughs> But now my fantasy plant is here. Oh, and by the way, I have a coupon code with Gabriella Plants. You could get 15% off any size order if you use my code reallybigplant at checkout. I would love to hear from you about what is on your fantasy wish list of plants that you fantasize about owning but don't think you ever will. Who knows, maybe one day your favorite seller will start offering one of those plants at a reasonable price that you could just go ahead and take the plunge. I have kind of a crazy cockamamie plan for this plant that I'm not sure is gonna work. Hey, it's future Caitlin here. It's been about a week, a little over a week since I did my unboxing. I ended up doing a really cool project with one of the plants. I'm really excited to show you guys how I potted that up. This has been a really fun unboxing. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you are having a fantastic planty week and that your plants are bringing you joy and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.